What's good, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. Back here with Ann Show. Don't be mad at me. I know I haven't been consistent, but I'm back because I feel like this is an important video and I've been wanting to do this, but I've been procrastinating. But as y'all can see by that title, today is going to be like a Q&A. You know, I asked my close friends to ask me some questions about anything like, you know, being a mother, a single mom, a new mom, being in the military, questions about me, like anything that people wanted to know. I told them to ask. I had a couple of my friends ask some questions to y'all. And y'all, I got like 40 something questions. That was a lot of questions that I got, you know, so. I don't know if I'm gonna do all of them. I might do all of them though, cause some of them was really good questions. And you know, why not? I missed y'all. A lot of people up here are moms and they liked my little vlog I did, my first vlog I did. So, you know, why not answer some of the questions that y'all had? The first question is, how old are you? So I am 21. I was born July 2nd, 2002. Big cancer, period. <laughs> uh, no boss. <laughs> Next question. What was your reaction when you found out you were pregnant? Oh, that's a good one. That's a real good question. So my reaction when I found out I was pregnant was, I wasn't really shocked, but I was shocked at the same time. like. It was like a lot of emotions because it was crazy because me and my son's dad like when my like cycle didn't come on i'm like you know it, it had actually i take that back it had came on for a day so i'm like for one that was normal it came on for a day and then it went off so i'm like hmm so he was like, either you're pregnant or you had a miscarriage. And I'm like, maybe I had a miscarriage because, you know, like that wasn't normal. So I was like, let's just buy a test. Like, mind you, I had took tests in the past, but they were all negative. So I'm like, maybe it was a miscarriage. Like, you know, nothing major. Long story short, I got the test. I came home. I was procrastinating. And he was like, go take the test. So. I went in the bathroom and took the test, y'all. That jank came back quick as hell. Like, it was positive. And I was just like, oh my God. Like, I was looking at it. Like, I was like, I'm like, we're pregnant. Like, we're about to have a baby. He didn't even have, <clears throat> he didn't even have any emotion, no reaction for real. Like, but then again, we kind of knew that it was bound to happen. So, that was my reaction. Next question where are you stationed i'm stationed in norfolk virginia the next question do you believe in god's timing absolutely absolutely like now that i'm on my journey i can honestly say that i do believe in god's timing like you know, like back in the day, like I would, instead of letting stuff come naturally, like I would try to force stuff to be what I wanted to be. Even if I wasn't ready for it to be what I wanted, to, wanted it to be, I would do that. And now I definitely believe in God's time and like, it'll come when he's ready for it to come. It'll happen when he's ready for it to happen. Like next question. Do you have support? Yes. 110% yes. I do definitely have support. Next question. Do you believe in marriage? Yes. I definitely do. But that falls back under the God's timing question. Like, I definitely do believe in getting married. I do want to get married. But that's all under God's timing. So, we will see. One day, y'all might see Kayla walking down the aisle. Well, no. Actually, I take that back because I don't even want a big wedding. But, next question. What is your name? 
I feel like that's so obvious. Like, well, my name is Sha Kayla, but I go by Kayla. So, yeah. Next question. Are you going to have to go on deployment now that you have a baby? With the Navy, it's definitely a possibility to have to go on deployment no matter what. Like, but the way that my rotation is going right now, I was on sea, I got pregnant, now I'm on shore, but I have to finish my sea time because I owe, you know, some sea time. So now that I'm on shore, the next place that I go to is going to require me to go back to sea. But there's ways around it, y'all. I'm not going to say too much because... This is YouTube, and I don't want to get in trouble. But there's definitely ways around it. Me, no. For my rotation, I'm not going to have to go on deployment with, you know, that I have a baby. And even if I did have to go on deployment, or if you had to go on deployment, you have a family, a fam, mm, a family care plan. So your baby would, you know, go with a family member or whoever's next in your plan until you came back from deployment. So regardless, you know, it's going to have to get done. Well, I'm not going to say it's going to have to get done, but yeah. Next question. There's so many good questions. Like, how is the newborn stage? Ooh. So... The newborn stage is definitely different. I'm gonna speak from my experience. So when I first brought my baby home, like I had, I'm like, I had that mindset in my head that like, okay, you you were on a ship, you used to stay on duty. You had watch. For watch, you had to wake up. Sometimes you had to wake up in the middle of the night, like, you would be sleeping and you would have to get up at midnight or you have to get up at four in the morning, you know, whatever time to stay and watch. So I had that mindset that like, okay, well, you're having a baby and you're going to have to wake up in the middle of the night. There's going to be periods where you're going to have to be up for long times of the night because your baby might want to be up. You know, he might want to. He might fuss because he's hungry. He might, you know, have gas. So I had this mindset already when we came home that, like, sleep was going to be out the window. But then again, with being in the military, you get four months of maternity leave. So I was like, okay, like, it's not going to be too bad. Mommy's ready. Like, you want to be up? We got to get up. So... <laughs> My newborn stage was like, it wasn't really that bad. First, I was breastfeeding. So he would wake up, you know, every like two, three hours. Mind you, I was trying to breast, I was trying to pump at first. I was pumping at first because my son, my son wasn't latching onto the boob. So I was pumping like consistently. His guy mom, like I said, his guy mom was here. So she would like wake me up like, Kayla, you have to pump. And I'm just like, oh my God. So that was tiring off rip because I'm like, Lord, like he's waking up every two hours, two to three hours. You know, my boobs are engorged. Like he wants to eat. I'm trying to pump, like making sure that I had enough milk. Like I had a log y'all and I would log how much I pumped, how much I fed him, like, because with the milk, you can't have milk out for a certain amount of time. So I was like, Lord, like, we're wasting milk. Like, he's only drinking this amount of ounces, and I still got this much left, and I didn't want to leave the milk. You know, when you're a new mom, too, you always ask other people for opinions, right? But what I had to learn is that your child is definitely not going to be the same from my child, her child, her child. Everybody's child is different. So I'm like, okay. When I would ask people, people would tell me stuff that their child, how stuff would work for their child. 
And, you know, I would try to take that into consideration and my child was completely different. My child was a preemie baby for one. So certain things that they could do for their baby, I couldn't do for mine because like I said, he wasn't latching on the boot. His intake of milk wasn't as much because he was still so small. Everything was so small. Like he was still supposed to be in the womb for another month, but he came early. Okay. Do you miss your baby throughout the day? Um, in the beginning, yes, definitely missed him a lot. Like, you know, I just wanted to make sure, you know, I didn't like I had put my baby in daycare. So I'm like, I just hope he's okay. You know, in the daycare that my son goes to, they don't have, um, they don't have cameras like that the moms can watch through the, on the phone throughout the day. So I'm like, oh my God, like, I just hope my baby's okay. I'm all, I'm 40 minutes away if I need to get to him. Like, even though he's on a base, a secure location, like, I just, you know, at first I was in panic mode because I'm like, he's so tiny. Like, he's, he's only three months. Like, anything could happen. But now, no, I'd be so glad to drop him off, like, if I'm sick, if I have a day off and the daycare's open, baby, he's going to daycare. Because, like, mommy need a break. <laughs> and my son, he's so clingy. Like, he just wants to be up under his mom. Like, every time, like, I'm surprised right now, he's not in here with me. Like, he just loves being up under his mom. The next question is, how was boot camp? Hmm. So, my boot camp experience was kind of slight. It was kind of depressing. That boy just be yelling. But it was kind of depressing, y'all, because I went during, like, the holidays. I went during, like, Christmas. I went during New Year's. I went during Valentine's. So, it was just, like, you know, instead of being at home, I was in boot camp. And I didn't get to call home. So it was kind of sad, you know. My division was so trash. Like, our RDCs didn't like us. Like, I don't know. Boot camp isn't a bad experience. I might do, like, another video about boot camp, too. But overall, boot camp isn't bad. I will honestly say it's different. It's different from the fleet. But... It's still a good training experience for people that want to go through the Navy. It still helps you, you know, prepare for the fleet. I think my son coming. Told y'all he not gonna be far from his mama for long. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> hey. Hey. Okay, enough. Mommy's making a video. When you find out you're pregnant on a ship, what do you do? So on my ship, when I found out I was pregnant, I like, I had to go to medical on the ship to like confirm it. They made me do a pregnancy test on the ship, you know, to confirm it or whatever. And then um, what happened? They started like, they did like pregnancy paperwork and They'll keep you on the ship till you're like 14 weeks. I think they can keep you on the ship up to 14 weeks. But I was trying to get off before, like we were in the shipyard, like I was just tired. We we had to walk um, like damn near two, two miles to get to the boat, like, mm -mm. and mind you, like for my first trimester of my pregnancy, I was so sick, like I was sick as a dog. Do you often feel overwhelmed by being a mom? Um, no, not really. Like, I mean, in the beginning, yes, because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Like, I have a a week old baby crying, like, you know, he, gas built up that hurts their stomachs, you know, acid reflux. Him crying, him breaking out, not knowing, like, what to do. Still trying to learn, like, like now, 
I'm learning. Like I've learned a lot, but then again, we have like so many resources to ask questions. Like if my son gets a fever, I go right on TikTok or I'll text a friend of mine that I know and I'll ask questions. Like I don't get overwhelmed because I ask questions. Like I'm not gonna sit here and act like I know everything when it comes to my baby because this is my first child, but I'm not gonna be upset because I don't know. Now there has been nights where I have been overwhelmed because I know I have to get up for work in the morning and he's having a sleep regression and he's up for two hours just watching TV. But you know what I do then? I turn right over and I go back to bed. Y'all asking some really good questions. Like some of these kind of like stumble in my mind. Like I'm, I'm trying to think like how to answer them. Okay. Next question. Is it hard being a single mom? And is it hard being a single mom in the military? Whew. Um, okay. So for the first part of that question, is it hard being a single mom? Um, it kind of goes back to what I said like earlier in the video. It's the reality of the situation. Um, you know, it is what it is. I can't change it. I'm not going to force it. I'm not going to beg. I'm not going to do anything different than what I've been doing. Um, is it hard being a single mom? I feel like it's hard if you let it, if you let it be hard. Because, like I said, there's so many resources out, out here, you know, to get what you need to get done. And, like, I don't know. I'm not going to say it's hard. But in the beginning, it was definitely overwhelming because I had to get up and do everything. Like, I had to get up and make change diapers, changing multiple diapers throughout the night, you know, bathing, uh, bathing him, you know, bathing me, me taking a bath, trying to pump, trying to make sure he's sleeping good, he's comfortable, he's fed, you know, he's not gassy uh changing diapers then when i you know switched over to formula making sure that everything was good like and then i'm it goes back to where i said that i'm grateful that i was able to have a baby shower because i didn't have to buy anything like clothes or anything until my son got like maybe six plus months old we had so many diapers like my son first off was a premature baby so he started off in pee diapers he and we had so many ones what i wish i would have known is though that you could trade your diapers in so for your moms out there if your child gets to an age where they're like too big for a size one or size two don't throw them away go to Target and trade them holes in or trade them diaper in. Second part to that question, is it hard being a single mom in the military? No, because I work from eight to 2.30. My son's daycare doesn't close until six. They open at six or five. So when I drop him off in the morning to when I get off at work, when I get off at 2.30, I come home sometimes. I'm supposed to be getting in the gym but I come home sometimes and I'll nap or I'll read my Bible and like do like quiet time. So that when I pick him up, it's dinner, play, bath and bed. And that's like my routine. So I don't know, it's not really hard because like we have a routine. My son is on a schedule. Um, and that's another major thing, making sure your children are on a schedule, like get them used to being on a routine and watch how effective like you may have to shift the routine but especially when it comes to like being in daycare and stuff like that you you're able to see like what time your your child takes a nap what time your child wants to eat and that's how it is for my son i don't think being a single mom is hard i feel like also women let men make it hard for them and we shouldn't do that like we shouldn't because at the end of the day, 
us being a mom never stops, you know? So I don't think it's hard. It's challenging sometimes, but be strong. You got it. Be strong. That's all you can do because you got to be strong for your baby. You got to be strong for them. So did you have a natural birth or a c I'm a C-section birth. I don't even know how to say that word. Um, so I had a C-section. When I went to that hospital, it was, and I'm gonna answer this question too, cause somebody asked how was my labor experience. So when I went to the hospital, for one, I had came home from work and I had ate some Olive Garden or whatever. And it was so crazy how the timing played out for this because four days before I had just had my baby shower. And it was so crazy because after my baby shower, the following week I was supposed to do my maternity shoot. And I had, you know, came home from work you know, typical routine, lay down on the couch, pregnant, eating leftovers. No, either I was eating leftovers or I was eating Olive Garden. I think I was eating Olive Garden. And, you know, I was having contractions. And I thought maybe it was just Braxton Hicks. So I just kept contracting all that day. Like, all that day, I just kept contracting, contracting, contracting. So my son's dad was here. And I'm just hurting, like... He don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Like, so I called my friend who had just had her baby two months before. And I asked her and I'm like, hey, like, I'm having contractions. Like, my mucus plug then fell out, y'all. So she's like, whatever you do, like, don't take a bath. Don't sit in the bath water because it'll make it, I guess, it'll make you dilate more. And in my head, y'all, I just wanted to sit in the tub, like, I just, I don't know why when I'm in pain, like when my stomach's hurting or if like I'm having like period cramps or anything, the first thing I want to do is sit in the bath. Like when I'm sick, I want to get in the bath. I want to sit in some hot water. Like, I don't know. So I'm like, okay. So I had already showered. I didn't even put no clothes on. I was just laying on the floor. So they were like, you know, time your contractions or whatever. Mind you, I was already two, two centimeters dilated at 32 weeks pregnant. Mind you, I was talking through my contraction, whatever. So, my son's dad called his family and they're like, the baby's coming tonight. And I'm like, no, like, the baby's not coming tonight. I'm just having, like, Braxton Hicks, like, nothing major. It's just, you know, I, I think I'll be able to sleep through it or whatever. And they was like, you don't want to sleep through it. And you wake up and the baby on the bed. So, I'm like, okay. So, my son's dad was like, let's go to the hospital or whatever. So I think it was like eight something when I went to the hospital. We went to the hospital, he put me in a wheelchair or whatever, and somebody else was walking around the hospital. She was having contractions too. And she was walking, taking deep breaths. I'm just sitting there contracting in the chair, in the wheelchair, and I feel so nauseous. I threw up in the lobby. I, and it was Olive Garden, I had some Alfredo. I threw up the pasta in the lobby or whatever. At this point, it's three pregnant women out there. So them two went first and then I ended up going back in the triage section because they had three triage rooms back in uh, the labor and delivery, you know, part of the hospital. So we were in the triage room. Mind you, they had just seen me two weeks ago because I was contracting Two, two weeks ago, two weeks prior, I mean, before I was contracting and the same doctor seen me and he told me, I remember he told me when the first time he had seen me, he stopped my contractions and he was like, well, you know, sometimes some people make it until full term and sometimes some people don't. He was like, but we stopped your contractions. So we're going to like, we're going to see how long you go before it's actually time to have the baby. But he was like, you're already two centimeters dilated and you're 32 weeks pregnant. He was like, but if you get to five centimeters, you're gonna have emergency C-section. So I'm like, okay. So when I got to the hospital that night, 
my son's dad and me, like I was laying down. It was probably about midnight by the time that I had got to, you know, back to the room. And you know, time's going. They got the heart monitor on my stomach. You know, the baby's like, he's, my son's contracting. We're contracting. And the doctor comes in and he's like, okay, mom, like, let me, let me check to see how dilated you are or whatever. So they're like, you're five centimeters dilated. Remember, you got to do the emergency C-section. Like, you're not going home tonight. The baby's coming today. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's May, it's May 4th at this moment it's may 4th and i'm like okay like so i caught my mom had ended up coming to the hospital and she was back there at first and my son's dad you know had to show them had to go get them to show them like where we were at so my mom had came back and the doctor were like okay well both of you guys can't come back like who's gonna come back so my mom was like well let the dad go back or whatever so my son's dad, you know, they, I signed the paperwork or whatever. And my son's dad, they got him dressed, put him in the, the scrub uniform. And I was panicking because I don't like laying down for long periods of time. And then they had like this big sheet in front of me. Like I couldn't see what, how, like them cutting me open. They had numbed me so good. They had put the oxygen tank in my, the oxygen thing in my nose. You know, the doctor, she was talking to me. My son's dad, he was nervous because he's like, like, they're cutting you open. And I'm just out of it. Like, they didn't give me an epidural. And, you know, before we know it, I hear like a little, Quah. and that was it. And they were like, he's here. Like, he has a nice amount of hair. Like, he only cried once. And... I'm like, he's here. Like, it was quick. So I'm talking to my son's dad. And I'm like, like, how does he look? Like, do, is he bald headed? Like, I'm just asking all these questions because I'm like, what's going on? Like, I didn't even hear my baby cry. And they were like, yeah, he's five pounds exactly. But they were like, he's got to go to the NICU or whatever. So, yeah, I had a NICU baby. And, um, uh, you know, for him to be a month and five days early, for him to come out like five pounds, that was still pretty good for, you know, his age. Because I, I had just turned 35 weeks when I had my son. I had my son at 34 and 6, I believe. 34 and 7, something like that. But, yeah. So... That's like a little snippet of my brother son, my brother's story. But I had my son May 4th at 2. I think I either had him at 2 or 4 in the morning. I think it was 2 though. Because my labor, my labor was literally like 4 hours. So 1, 2, 3. So about 4. 4 in the morning. And like I loved it. It was so quick. I would have a C-section every time. Every time. Like the pain was only for the healing process. That's really where all the pain came from. But I would do a C-section every time, y'all. Like, no lie. I would always choose to do a C-section. I don't know why I just don't. I feel nervous to push it out. I'd rather just cut me open and pull it out. But, yeah. Whew. I love that question because I like telling people my birth story and my labor story because it's like... I was only in labor for four minutes. I mean, four hours. And people be like, well, I've been in for 18 plus 29. Da, da, da. No, not me, baby. I was in for four hours. Lip gloss got my lips white. But I was in for four hours. And my son was here. How long is maternity leave? Maternity leave is four months now. Um, For the women, I think the men, the military men, I think it's like two months or three months something i don't know how do you pcs travel to your next command with a child hmm um simple like you just you know you do your regular pcs stuff and you know you just take your child with you or however you plan on getting to your next duty station you know 
Is it difficult dating due to the fact that you're a mother and you want to set an example? That's a good question, too. Yes. I mean, I'm not even going to say yes because I haven't dated anybody while, I, while you know, dur during the duration of my motherhood journey. Um, I'm not going to say it's difficult, but it's definitely factors that affect certain things because... And this goes back to that God's timing question because um, when you meet me and when you're dealing with me, it's not just me. I come with a son. So I feel like you, for one, you have to accept that I have a son. Two, if you can't accept that I have a son, then it's no me and you, you know? It's not difficult, though. But then again, also, I'm not looking for anything. Like, if it's not sent from God, if it's not meant to be, God will let me know. But I'm not, I feel like when I look, I'm not looking, I'm not getting what I need from a dude. Like, the dudes that I have talked to, we never got anywhere. And it, if it was a dude that by chance that I thought may have had, you know, a chance, they weren't of God. Like, it, it didn't work. Next question. Are you doing 20 years? Uh, I have my... Eh. Like, the Navy really has, like, pros, and then they have cons. Like, I don't know. I see myself. I feel like I could do it, but I just don't know what God has for me. Like, anything could change, honestly. Like... I could say that I want to do 20 years today and my next duty station, I want to get out. Like I told myself though, I would give myself until the end of my short, my short duty contract to decide as to what I want to do. But I don't know. Cause I kind of want to do like, you know, I, I'm about to start school and stuff. So I kind of want to see like where that takes me to. So yeah. Um, what is something important that you've learned the past year as a mother in service that you feel like a soon-to-be mom in the military should know? Hmm. Dang, that's a good question. That's a really good question. Dang. Hmm. Something important that I've learned the past year as a mother in the service. Hmm. Your child comes first. Because in the military, they will definitely make you feel like the mission is first. No, my child comes first. I feel like that's something that's important. Like, especially being that my son, you know, has a couple of conditions. So he has like a lot of appointments. Being in the military, everybody knows it's hard to get appointments. So it's like, you know, you don't want to be that person that's always calling off or always having to be off or having to not be at work or be excused from work because your child has appointments or because your child is sick. No, your child comes first. Your child is the priority and anybody else can kiss your, yeah, because your child comes first. I'm grown. You're not going to tell me that I can't go to an appointment for my for my child you're not gonna do that so i feel like that's something important is one being an advocate for your child and two like putting your child first like those are two things that are important to me that i've learned since you know while being in the military and it's more things too but those are like two that i could really think off the top of my head you struggle with self-love Honestly, no. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, at first, when I had my baby, I was kind of ashamed of, like, my body, you know? Like, I have the little wrinkles on my body, like, on my stomach, you know, after having a baby, you know, my breast changed. Um... I did struggle with myself, with loving myself at first, 
But then, you know, I had to realize that that's what happens when you have a baby, you know? Your body changes. You go through changes that you no longer, that you can't change, you know? Like, that's you. You have to accept you for who you are. But I still knew that I was a beautiful person inside and out. So, you know, like, most people go do, like, the mommy makeovers. No, like, because I look at it, too, where it's like, I'm going to have more children. So God knows how my body is going to look after the other children that I have, you know? But I definitely don't struggle with self-love, though. Like, now I've accepted it for what it is. Um, you know, I love myself. I know I'm pretty. Don't mind a little white from my lip gloss, though. But I know I'm pretty. Um, I know I'm beautiful. I know that somebody will love me and my body for how it is, my mindset, my aura, everything. Somebody will love it. And if not, I'm going to continue loving it. My foot went to sleep, y'all. Um, but yeah. Y'all asked some really good questions. I didn't go through all the questions. But I did, like, a vast majority of the questions. And y'all asked some very good questions, y'all. And if y'all have more questions, comment them down below. And, you know, I'll answer them. Or, you know, um someone watched my youtube video and she dm'd me and you know we had a conversation and she you know asked me some questions based off my youtube video so definitely like go to my instagram you know uh, not subscribe but follow me and you know i'm not a stranger i don't i'm not too good to answer questions i'm not better than nobody so yeah ask questions comment them you know share the video Hopefully I answered, you know, the questions to, you know, my best ability. Once again, it was my opinion on certain things. Um, and yeah, y'all, keep rocking with me. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your friends, friends, tell your friends, 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 tell your cousins, friends, tell your grandma, friends, tell your mama, friends. Tell all your friends to come subscribe. I'm going to do better with the content. I already said it. Don't get on me. I'm going to do better. I promise. But yeah. Give this video a thumbs up. And stay tuned for the next one. Mwah. Love y'all. Bye.